Hi everyone, my name is Doris, that's D-O-R-I-S. Not Dory, not Dora, but Doris. And this right here says Durace. It does not say Doris, but after everyone started calling me Durace, I thought, okay, I see how they can get confused because if you read this and pronounce this a different way, then it could be said as Doris. But thank you for tuning in. This is my Q&A video. And also thank you so much for all of your questions. I received tons of them through YouTube comments, through Instagram and email. So let's go ahead and get started in answering them. My question, do you speak Spanish fluently? And if so, I want to hear you speak Spanish. Si, sí, si hablo español, le mando un saludo a todos mis seguidores que hablan español. Español es el primer idioma que yo aprendí de mis padres. La razón que no lo hablo mucho en este canal es porque no me sé comunicar muy bien en términos de carros. Si tratara, no sería muy bonito. Estoy aprendiendo poco a poco, pero así voy. <laughs> My main focus now is to be able to handle the car with as much power as it can make any. Yes, straight line is fun, but I'm not too worried about that now. Love the way your garage looks. It's so clean and organized. You also have a lot of tools. It's always good since you do most of your installs and maintenance. Glad to hear the oil separators worked. I guess my question is, how long do you want to keep your GT350? Are you thinking of getting another car in a few years? Thank you and hope to see your Q&A video. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day as well. So I immediately knew that I wanted my GC350 and I do not plan on getting rid of it whatsoever. But I do plan on getting another car eventually as I do want to start and grow my collection. Who does your filming besides you? They're doing a great job and I love the quality. Thank you, it's taken some time to get where I am since my first video and I only expect to get better from here on. So if I'm holding the camera, I'm filming myself. If not, then I use the tripods for many different angles. Sometimes it can get pretty annoying since I have to keep moving the camera from one tripod to another. When it comes to cinematic shots, as far as like Z drives or drive-by shots, then Chris does help me in filming that or also when I do the car washes because I mean, the camera isn't just floating up in the air, so he helps me with that as well. How much time per week do you spend making your videos, including editing? In regards to filming my videos, I try to do it as much as possible during the weekdays after work, but it can get a little bit hectic with my work schedule so I just end up doing it on my days off which is on the weekends and I just spend the entire day filming as far as editing <laughs> it takes a lot of time it may take depending on the video three to eight hours to edit one video great video for the Q&A what encouraged you to start doing YouTube and where do you see your channel in a year five years keep up the great work I always look forward to your videos thank you so much so what encouraged me to start doing YouTube is, well, I actually created a channel when I got my 2016 Mustang GT and I did some videos, but I didn't post any because I got shy and embarrassed. Then I just ended up selling my car, but I told myself once I get my GT350, I'm going to go ahead with my channel and actually create videos. So here I am today. And where do you see your channel in a year? So in a year, I would like to have another car added to the collection so I can create more content for you guys. And I would also want to create a brand. It wouldn't be woman driven because that really doesn't make sense. It would be something else that other car enthusiasts can relate to. I mean, I would still have woman driven, but that would be for my women audience. And it'll probably just be under the brand that I'll create, which I am working on right now. And in five years, <laughs> I feel like this is an interview question. I know I've been asked this question before. I feel like I'm in an interview right now, but so in five years, I would like to have even more cars that I've collected and I would like to take my channel somewhere else, build upon my brand where it's not just me being featured, where I can feature other car enthusiasts and help them um, build and create their brand as well but i mean five years is a long time from now but 
Yeah, that's what came to my mind. <laughs> Hi, Durace. I have two questions. One, do you think you'll ever get a 2020 GT500? Two, any interest in getting an old car at some point on the channel? Of course, I'm partial to Fox Bodies, obviously. LOL. Great bit. Thank you. I mean, who doesn't want a GT500 that's into Mustangs? But just patiently waiting to see what information Ford releases at the auto show next year. And as far as an old car, I would love to, so it would either be American or German. If I were to go with an American car, I would like like a late 60s Mustang or Camaro to be a project car that I can work on. If I were to go German, then I'm thinking like a track project build and it would most likely be an E36 or an E46 M3. I mean, yes, I would love a Fox body as well. <laughs> I would want all of the above, but I can only get one or at least one at a time. What's my favorite food? Not that, I mean, I do like cereal, but it's not my favorite food. My favorite food comes from the Hispanic and Latin origin. So like Cuban, Dominican, Puerto Rican, Nicaraguan, Colombian, but there's none of that here in Arizona. So if you do live in Arizona and know where I could find a good spot like that, then let me know. This one is from IG. Will I be doing a Christmas special? Yes, I will be doing a Christmas Eve special. It's not going to be as elaborate as the Halloween one, but I will be doing one, so stay tuned. Have you done any sports activities when you were in high school? Yes, I did. I did dancing. I was part of the dance team. I started in sophomore year and I went to senior year. I absolutely love dancing still until this day. It's one of my passions that I still enjoy. So yeah, <laughs> but that brings great memories actually. If money was no object, what car would you own? Well, if money was no object, then I wouldn't just have one car. I would have several different cars, starting with some old American muscle from 66 to 71. It would range from Mustangs, Camaros, Challengers. Presently, I would stay with my GT350. This is not going anywhere. I would also love a GT500 because who doesn't want one? I would love a Viper ACR a 0.2 GT3 RS and that Ferrari 458 that I drove at the track I would have driven it from the track straight to my house I can go on this list on forever but I need to get back on working on my car new video will be up soon on what I'm doing hello Doris I have a few questions for you one what got you into cars two where are you originally from do you have any siblings and if so where in the lineup do you come in thank you Hi there. So the first question I already answered or will answer somewhere in this video. The second question, so I'm originally from South Florida. I was born in Miami and no, I don't have any siblings. I am an only child, so there's no lineup. I'm one of one. How old are you and what is your background nationality? I am 26 years old. I was born and raised in Miami, Florida, but my parents are from Nicaragua. And yes, I am at the track today, but I did not bring my car because there's a noise restriction here and my car wouldn't have passed. Who taught you and where did you learn how to do your own maintenance and mods? Where do you get the strength? I replaced the spring on my clutch pedal the other day and I was whooped afterwards and I had a silly set of vice grips. I know exactly what you mean. That was the first mod I did on my 2016 Mustang GT and I remember it being way easier than replacing it on my GT350 for some reason. This was more of a headache, I don't know why, but I'm glad I got it done and I'm glad you got it done as well. So growing up, my dad would work on cars and he would always ask me to sit with him and also assist him. So I learned there mostly like doing maintenance on cars. Then as I grew older, I had friends and they had performance cars. They would work on them so I got exposed to that and I would help them as well just because I wanted to learn. Then I got my 2016 Mustang GT and I started doing mods on it with help. 
then once i got my gc350 i decided okay that's it i'm going to do the mods myself it's not hard there's plenty of videos out there there's instructions that you can read everyone starts somewhere and i'm sure all of you can do it as far as to where do i get the strength i mean I know that once I start, <laughs> see how my car is, it's a pieces, so I need to finish. I mean, sometimes it may take me two days, like my lowering springs, that was like probably the hardest thing that I've done so far. So you just have to keep going. <laughs> your favorite mod on your GT350. So I have two favorite mods. The first one would have to be my resonator delete, just because I love how it sounds. I mean, I loved how it sounded before, but I love it even more now. I don't even listen to the radio anymore. I just listen to my exhaust note whenever I'm driving. And the second would have to be the R spoiler. I think that that really completed the look and gave it a very aggressive look just overall. I think it tied it together with the R splitter. I wasn't a fan of how it looked with the spoiler before, but I really do love how it looks now. Where did you learn how to drive stick? So I learned how to drive manual in my previous car, which was a 2016 Mustang GT. And let me tell you that at first, it wasn't easy. I almost gave up, but I'm glad I didn't. Can you heel toe downshift? No, I wish I could, but I do want to learn. Are you opposed to a foot cam during your video racing series? Do you mean like this? Love your videos, Doris. As a previous GC350 owner, I'm curious if you'd ever like to trade in yours for a C7 Corvette Grand Sport like I did. If you ever get to Chicagoland, my Grand Sport is available for your video shoot. Thank you, I do appreciate it, and I'll let you know if I'm ever in Chicago. No, I would not trade in my GC350, but I wouldn't mind getting a Corvette to add to my collection. Are you generally mechanically inclined? Does your technical abilities extend to other types of machines like HVAC or repairing appliances? I mean, I don't really know how to answer that. I can tell you that I've never repaired any of these machines like HVAC or appliances. I've never done that. But I mean, I know how to do something if I can see someone else doing it, if there's a video, if there's instructions that I can follow, then I can pick up and quickly learn. Being in the IT field, I think that helps me a lot because it requires me to be very technical and to troubleshoot, but as I get more experience and it allows me to, you know, I, I no longer need instructions, I can figure it out if, if there's been like something similar to that and I can just pick up things easier. Number two, how do you afford your GC350, its mods, insurance, maintenance, did you budget smartly break the bank? So. I do have a job, so that's how I afford my GC250, its mods, insurance, and maintenance. And no, I did not break the bank. I budgeted smartly. I mean, I mean, I did sell my GT because I just knew I couldn't afford both cars. I knew I wanted my GC350 and I knew I wanted to mod it. So I had to sell it and just be without a performance car for a while. And yeah, that's basically how I afford it. What made you get a GC350? So I had my 2016 Mustang GT and knew about the GC350 from watching YouTube videos and reading online. Then one day I saw it in person and I just knew that was the car I wanted to get. I loved everything about it, the way it sounded, the way it looked, everything was just so appealing, but I just couldn't afford it, at least back then. Then fast forward to 2017, I spotted one at a Toyota dealership out of all places. I dropped by, asked if I can test drive it. They said yes. After the drive, I knew I had to make moves, so I sold my GT and the rest is history. This is another one from my G. Why did I move from Florida? So I was born and raised in South Florida and I've been there my entire life. Four years ago, I moved to Arizona, then I moved back to Florida and now I'm back in Arizona permanently. I was just tired of how crowded South Florida was getting and I really do enjoy the openness that Arizona offers. I do enjoy how peaceful it is, at least where I'm living. I love doing outdoor activities and there's lots of that to do here in Arizona. And it's also a big plus that there's great neighboring states that I can visit. Doris, the first for your question and answer session is, what is your day job? 
So I work in the IT field as a systems engineer. In short, what that is, is I support many of our clients, which are companies, and I make sure that they're up and running 24 seven. Let me go ahead and show you what I mean. So many of you may not know what this is, but this is what I work on on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is basically a virtual environment with virtual servers that are sitting on top of physical servers. And I manage and engineer the infrastructure for these clients. So you can see how it can get pretty hectic at times because systems don't really care if it's the holiday, a weekend, or whatever day it is. If something goes down, then I need to deal with it. Second question, what led you to become a car enthusiast? So it all started in high school when I had friends that had affordable performance cars. So we would go out racing and just do high school kid things. Then as I grew older, I got into the BMW scene and I would go to rallies and meets, but that really wasn't for me. Then I got my 2016 Mustang GT and I just knew that that platform was for me and I just ran with it. And a follow up for the second question, is the Mustang your first performance car? Thank you for making your channel. It's refreshing to see girls in non-traditional roles. And I also love the outfits you wore on some of your videos. You rock. Thank you, I do appreciate it. So yes, the Mustang was my first performance car, but it was my 2016 Mustang GT, the first performance car I had, not my Shelby. What got you into racing and working on your own vehicles? So what got me into racing is ever since high school and my friends would go racing, I've always been the passenger side and I always thought to myself, one day I'm going to be on the driver's side. What got me into working on my own vehicles is the same thing. So I've always been around people that had worked on their cars and I always thought one day I'll be the one working on my own car and here we are today. The second question, have you ever been pulled over for racing? No, I haven't been pulled over for racing because I don't race, but I have been pulled over for testing body roll. <laughs> Out of all things, right? <laughs> and the third question, have you ever been in a Ford versus Chevy argument? Surprisingly, not, but I have been in a Ford versus BMW argument with my friend. We get into it all the time, it's so funny. And four, are you possibly going to do a Christmas theme outfit? Something similar to Halloween theme. LOL, love the videos, so keep them coming. Thank you, will do. Yes, as I stated before, I will be doing a Christmas theme video. All right guys, that is all for now. There's more questions where that came from, but I can't get to them all because not this will be a very long video. I don't like leaving any questions unanswered, so I will be going back and replying to those that I didn't include in this video. I had fun answering these questions and I hope you guys enjoy learning a bit more about me. Now I want to know a bit more about you. Where are you from and what car do you drive if you feel comfortable answering? Feel free to leave any follow-up questions or any future questions in the comments down below. Thank you again and I hope you guys have a happy holiday. Gracias por ver mi video y espero que tengan una feliz navidad. I'll see you guys on the next one. Los veo en el próximo.